Welcome to the Way to Recovery Show. I'm Pastor Greg Trout, and with me in the studio today is Dr. Laura Henry Harris. God bless you, sister. It's Greetings. Good to have you. Thank you so much for having me. You know, you're a wonderful author. I've read a lot of your books. Uh, you have three books, and you have some that are being written, and you have a couple that's non published. Yes. But the way you look her up is, is Google Dr. Laura Henry Harris. Make sure you put the Henry in there because there's a lot of other Laura Harrises, and we want to make sure. You get the right one. But here's what her books look like. They're wonderful. Uh, Salvation is free, but discipleship is not. Uh, was this your first book? Uh, yes, that's the first book we published. Yes. Okay. And then, I, I think I have them in order. Kingdom Citizenship Now, Experiencing God's Kingdom on Earth as it is in Heaven. Wonderful read. I encourage you to, to look at this. And here's my favorite cover. I saved this for last because, you know, I looked at this when, actually, I think when you was in the process of it. And this was my favorite, so I'm glad she went with this cover. Who is the bride? And I want you to look at that beautiful cover. And so look those books up. You need to get those in your library. Uh, it's going to bless you. Uh, we know each other personally. You know, we have a personal relationship and a history together. And uh, it's going to be wonderful for you to get into these books. And there's another one, and here's what we want to talk about first. Tell us about your, your next book that's coming. It's a recovery-related uh, book. Yes, it is. It is. It's actually called No Shame Zone. And uh, I became aware of the fact that so many people who are in bondage are suffering under shame. And shame is almost a hidden uh, demonic power in our lives because people can acknowledge the guilt of an action. They can say, I, I did this, this thing or that thing, but shame actually becomes attached to the guilt. It's the lie of the enemy that attaches to some sin, some other sin, pride, pornography, um, drug use, whatever it happens to be, some kind of action, and shame attaches to that. And uh, so when I began to learn about shame, I started seeing it everywhere. So many people are burdened under shame and they can't put their name, put a name on what they're experiencing in the spirit. They can't put a name to the shame. That's right. They cannot That's figure exactly it out. That's right. Uh, I've been there. Uh, you know, a lot of my colleagues have been there and you know, uh, we had a guy just last week actually who was on the show who had struggled with that. He couldn't go to his pastor. He couldn't go to his mentors because he's afraid of what they would think about him. So he was uh, in bondage of confess. He couldn't confess. That's right. And he stayed in that. And I think a lot of people stay in that for a long time. Now, God has taught me to confess the mess quick. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, no matter how bad it hurts, no matter how shameful it is, confess it out and then deal with it. That's exactly right. And you know what that is, uh, Pastor Greg, is when shame attaches with pride. And shame will tell you how horrible you are, and pride will keep you there because you can't confess that. It's almost anyway. a full condemnation. It is. It's like a, a circle of condemnation. And then somehow that evolves into that shame. Right. Uh, like I said, attached to that guilt. And then, you know, those are hard emotions to handle. I don't care who you are. That's right. That's Doesn't have right. to be just sin related, it can be, uh, it can be a lie. You can have guilt for something you really didn't do, and the enemy can use that to bring shame in your life. That's exactly right. And actually, people who have ch uh, suffered child sexual abuse or things mm -hmm. like that, so many times they bear so much shame, but they were not the perpetrator. They didn't do anything. They were the victim. They were the, the victim, the, the right. The shame came with that. But the trauma of that and all that, and but they bl have blamed themselves for years. Yes. I, I, know, I know there's a couple that I know right now that that um, uh, the uh, wife later on come out to talk about the sexual abuse that the husband had actually uh, done to her. Mm -hmm. And of course she had to go to jail. Of course she felt like she was at fault. Because right. now she's lost her husband for a couple of years because she thought, I caused this. Right, right. And the enemy had her believe in that. And of course she got freed from that. Right. Uh, and is healing from that now. Uh, does the book tell us about healing? Do you talk about healing oh, in yes. that book? Yes, the whole you know. thing is, uh, it's, it's based on a lot of uh, different uh, scenarios in Scripture. The people of Scripture who were burdened under shame, and we just take through how Jesus brought deliverance to those people, the woman at the well, and, and many others. Uh, Peter. Blind Bartimaeus, Peter, David, those are all discussed in the book. Uh, how those people, the ordinary people, you know, that we think we just want to put them on a pedestal because they're on the pages of Scripture, but you know, they had a lot of junk. And, Absolutely. Uh, and the Lord used that. And even the woman at the well, 
the thing that Satan would use to keep her in bondage and to keep her in isolation. You know, she went to the well in the middle of the day to avoid everybody else. She was imprisoned in her own shame. And uh, you know, the thing that Satan would use to keep her in bondage was the very thing she used to become the first evangelist. She went to the people and she said, he told me everything I ever mm. did. He, she used, the Lord used that, that, that tool of bondage that the enemy had placed her in and that was the tool of evangelism. You know, he says for those that uh, love him, you know, his purpose, uh, he will use the enemy's schemes against us yes. for his good pleasure and purpose. He'll turn it all around. That's right. You know, God turns it around. And, and I've seen that in my own life and other people's lives. And many that's come to the show, they've went through years of addiction, but God turned that around yeah, and used that as a tool to bless other people. That's right. You know, but you that's can't right. be quiet. No. You know, that's what this show's about. We're not going to be quiet. Right. You know, addiction does not have the rule over people. People can be delivered. There is hope. Families can be delivered. Uh, you know, I believe that cities can be delivered, you know, so. Absolutely. Well, and you know, I would just say this too. Uh, that is one of the, the best ways to find freedom is to take that thing which has been a cause of bondage and use it for the Lord. And it just takes all of the, the teeth and claws of the enemy out of it. And uh, it's really a great way to get to freedom. You, you know, I, I notice in jails a lot of times when we're doing jail ministry, you know, those guys, they may be bound by uh, their circumstance and, and they may have a sentence for, for a while. But to be bound inside is worse than being bound by bars. I mean, there's more people free in jail on the inside than they are out here That's on the right. outside sometimes. I see a lot of that. And, you know, we think that bondage is something that we cause. And that, uh, you know, when Satan lies to us and tells us that we can't be free from it, is when we really give him the keys to our, to our, our whole being, really. That's right. I mean, we cannot recover if we cannot believe that we can be delivered. That is correct. And so I, I see a lot of people beat down believing they can't be delivered. They go through years of this, and then they learn the true gospel. And it sounds like you're presenting the true gospel in this book of freedom. I'm excited about it. I'm anxious to get it finished. And one thing the Lord told me to do, it's so similar to what you're doing here. Um, the book will be 10 chapters, and the Lord told me to put a testimony in front of each chapter of somebody who has been delivered from shame. And the Lord just started wow. putting people in my path. And uh, I ran into a, a man who was an ex-Amish man from uh, Ohio, and he already sent me a, a testimony. It was, it was spectacular. A counselor that I talked to, she said, I've been burdened by shame for years. And just people who have had abortions, people who have been in drug addiction, uh, that they've just been beaten down by their circumstances. And the Lord's going to, He is using it. He's using those testimonies to just give people encouragement. Yeah, that sounds just like the show. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. so, yeah, we're, we're promoting this book now because it's very similar. It is. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I think hearing other people's testimonies helps me. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, that I'm not alone. Right. You know, even hearing other pastors' testimonies, you know, they've dealt. And, and there's been, I believe, a spiritual attack. Let's talk about something real quick that people don't like to talk about. But I think there's been a spiritual attack on Christians around the world. Uh, and it seems to be more and more as time goes by and we get closer to the end times. Because whatever you believe, we're still closer we daily. Are. But, you know, even attacks in my life, on my marriage, uh, on my ministry that God has given me, uh, and even attacks on close friends that I have, I've seen some people not recover though. They've not stayed in ministry because maybe they've believed the lie. Mm -hmm. And I've been praying that they would come back. But you know, how does the enemy get in there? You know, that's something I want to talk about. How do you think the enemy gets in our mind to the point to where we believe that we cannot come out of it? Because, you know, we can. Well, I, the Bible you know, says we can. I know, and I think the, I think the most important thing is to stay in faith. And that just seems so basic, but, I, but it right. is. It's fundamental. It's, it's very fundamental. But it's truth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one, one thing that has really um, helped me in my life is uh, I love the scripture that says, Submit yourself then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And um, I, there, we've had situations in our life where that was, that was the scripture that, that carried me through. That's all you had. That's all I had. And so I had to figure out how I was going to resist the devil. And how I resisted the devil was to minister to other people, to uh, pray, listen to healing and uh, faith scriptures. But mostly when, um, when my, my, the Lord kept, helped me to keep my faith up, but when my faith started waning a little bit, 
I would get into the scripture. I would listen to, to faith scriptures, healing scriptures, and just let those wash over me. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I would, I would put those faith scriptures in. And when my faith would just dip down a little bit, I, I would just stop it. I'm thinking, I'm not going there because I know where my salvation comes from. And, I, and so I, just, I would just get in the word and I would just uh, let just, the word do its work. Just stand on those promises. Yes. E even on those if my promises. faith was little, grab yes. all those promises and hang right. on to them for dear life. This is what God said. Not what I said. This is what God said. This is that's what right. God said. God said this. This is true. That's right. And sometimes that's all you have is a life raft, you know? Yes. And you're sinking in that That's junk. right. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, I, I think next week, uh, you know, hopefully I'm not speaking out of turn, but I think we're going to have your husband on next week. Or uh -huh. That's what I'm feeling anyway. Uh, you know, I know he's around the studio here. So, uh, you know, he's got a powerful story that we want to talk about. And, and I think the Lord is, is, is impressed upon me to ask him about that because he fought some disease and some things from even another country. Yeah. When he was on a missionary trip and, and right. he's got a powerful testimony. Uh, but we'll, we'll, hopefully he's hearing this right now, I'm pretty sure. And, and he'll, he'll get on the show. But, uh, you know, it's nice to get a, a family on the show who's went through some things. Now, you, you've went through some things. It's not like your life has been joy, joy, happy, happy because you're a Christian. That's, that is correct. And you even pastored a church for a while. and, went and all kind, I mean, you've been in ministry, non-church ministries. Uh, but, you know, something that you said to me that, that blessed me was that you found people who would pray for you. Yes, and that's that is right. that's That is helped. That is, that is huge to have an uh, intercessory base people that you can call on uh, that will uh, uh, petition the king, appeal to, appeal to the throne room uh, on your behalf when you need it. And uh, too many times, you know, it's the sheep that gets separated from the flock that's the easiest to pick, out, pick off. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if we stay, we surround ourselves with uh, brothers and sisters who love the Lord. And, you know, when we're having a time where we really need uh, some Love and mercy, we know where to go. <laughs> well, and I've called you at times. So, yes. and I mean, I'm not ashamed of that. I've called you at times <laughs> when I was in the worst state of mind and, and call you and you would pray with me and tell me about the promises of God. When I couldn't grab them myself, we mm. need those Ananias to say, you know what, this is what God is saying. This is truth. You know, hang on to this. That's right. And, uh, and so, you know, and you can call me anytime you want. <laughs> I feel like I I've have. called. I yeah, have. I feel like I've called you more than you've called I me. I don't but, think uh, so, Greg. However, we need, to go, <laughs> however we need to go back and forth. But it's good to have that. And I think Christians miss that. Right. And that's what a part of fellowship in church is for, that we could call one another, trusting one another, and encouraging one another, lifting each other up when the other one is weak. You know, we need people. That's we need right. our relationships. We do. You know, and they're important. They are very, they're extremely important. We're not meant to be uh, single in the faith. Uh, God did not ordain it that way in Scripture. Um, he meant for us to be in fellowship with other believers. You know, and the enemy tries to isolate us. I want to, I want to give you a word today because I know somebody's listening and this is important. He does try to pull the sheep out of the fold into a place of isolation so he can, he can devour you. So if you're that person today that's in that place of addiction, that you're off to yourself and you're being beat up and devoured, get down right now and pray and say, Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus right now over this room. I plead the blood of Jesus over my life. I plead the blood of Jesus over this television set right now. And I'm going to stand up and I'm going to flee from my circumstance, from that sin that's got me. I'm going to flee from it right now. I'm going to go to the phone and I'm going to call and then I'm going to get one of these books. <laughs> Amen. Well, get the Bible first. Get the Bible first <laughs> and then get you one of these books. They've got a lot of scripture. Uh, but yeah, so I believe that you can recover and come out of it right now. Laura, if you could say anything to anybody out there right now who's struggling, what would you say to them real quick? Uh, do not lose hope in Christ Jesus. Um, there is no circumstance that he cannot reach into the middle of. And if you have a desire uh, to walk with the Lord, he has, he, he has a desire to walk with you. That's and right. uh, the enemy will lie to you and say, no, you're too far gone. But if you've got that desire in your heart, that means you're not too far gone. That's and right. that means that the Lord wants you. And so just yield. Yield and surrender every, mm -hmm. every fiber of your being to the Lord. Surrender now before it's too late and give us a call. In Jesus' name, thank you. Thank you for coming to the show. Thank you.
Welcome back to the Way to Recovery show. And, you know, be sure to look at the info that we had on the screen there for you uh, about Laura's uh, book. And, you know, Laura Henry Harris uh, has got a great perspective on, on, on the kingdom. And, and I'm going to speak about that just a little bit, uh, about not storing our treasures up here on earth, but, but actually having treasures in the kingdom of God. And so just, you know, uh, like I said, go, go to those websites, uh, look for those books. I mean, they will really bless you. But let's, let's go to Matthew, the uh, sixth chapter, and, and look at verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now this is Jesus teaching a very valuable lesson to us. And you hear it a lot of times when, when, when we're looking at biblical teachings and, and uh, you know, we look at humility, we look at you know, being modest even in, in how we dress sometimes. You know, I'm one of those uh, marketplace t-shirt preachers. I, I like you know just a t-shirt with a powerful message on it. Over the years, I've become a, a bigger billboard, amen. Uh, maybe I could get paid for this, but, uh, but you know, um, when you're looking at where God is taking us, He's taking us towards the kingdom. Uh, God never draws you away from the kingdom. He always draws you towards a, a more spiritual maturity. And, and so uh, don't believe that God is going to draw you to sin. And sometimes we blame God. Well, God, why did He put me here and why did He let this happen? Listen, Satan draws us towards sin. God never tempts us, okay? But one of the greatest temptations that, that Satan has is material wealth, possessions, and getting us so engrossed in that, hallelujah, even through mainstream media, you know, you have to have this product and you have to have this, you have to have this kind of car, you have to dress this certain way, you have to, you know, and, and all these different traditions of men, and Satan uses that to make us have a false identity. And so we have a kingdom identity, I want you to understand that. Our identity is in the kingdom with God, with Christ, uh, especially if you're a believer. If you're a non-believer, you're still created by God. And so your identity is waiting on you and those good uh, works that God has prepared for you already before the beginning of time. And He wants to get you in your mission, your calling. But if you waste all your life trying to gain all these things, then your life becomes very shallow. It becomes very material. And, and, and a lot of people are so sad and they're anxious and they worry all the time. Uh, what will I eat? What will I put on? You know, what will I wear? I have to have that. I have to have name brand. I have to, listen, that's, that's not where God wants your focus because it distracts you from having peace with God. And God wants you to have peace, amen. And so he wants you also to consider him as a treasure. My relationship with Christ is my treasure. And that's where my heart is. And so you can't serve two masters. And, and let me read this. Let's skip down to verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Have you noticed that some Christians who are on the fence, it's material wealth and possessions and, and things like that that, that really uh, a lot of times keep them from going uh, full speed ahead with God. There's been many missionaries that had to give up their homes or, or, or sell their possessions and, and then just go out in faith to another country. You know, and I know that sounds really radical and wild to you probably, but for them, God called them to that. And they had to choose, you know, am I going to serve uh, God or mammon? And mammon being, uh, uh, in, in the old text, um, material wealth, uh, possessions. Uh, you can't serve uh, money uh, and wealth and still serve God. Um, it says, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. This will make more sense in a second. Uh, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on, is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. And, and I've got these things highlighted in, in this Bible because these scriptures uh, remind me uh, how to be humble. They remind me that my life that God's given me is an eternal life and it's a kingdom. I've been, I've been uh, birthed into the kingdom of God. And that, that all those that, that get led to Christ and, and they accept Him as, his personal, as, as their personal Savior into their heart, that's what their treasure. Christ becomes the treasure in their heart. And then my life is more than just food and more than just clothes. Amen. And, and I don't want to live that shallow lifestyle. At one time I was there. You know, I, I was who my possessions were. And I, I look around the room and, and God doesn't discourage you from having things. 
but are they being used for God's purpose? Amen. Are you able to bless others? He says we work and, and we have substance so that we can give to the church or we can give to other people. I, I see a lot of stuff here in this room and I'm looking at equipment and cameras and, and different things. Amen. But those things were bought so that I could speak to you and bring a message to you today. So they're being used for God's service. And, and the car that I drive, amen, I don't drive a, a real fancy car, but, but I, I drive a, a nice economical car that's good on gas, amen, and, 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 I, and I, I don't try to overdo, I, I try to, to live a, a modest lifestyle, and me and my wife both. And the reason we do that is because uh, we want to use as much finance as we can to bring shows like this to you or to help with missions and, and other missions that we've helped start and we've tried to help fund those. And you know, there's been times when we had financial trouble. We're no stranger to financial trouble. Uh, we're just normal people like you. Amen. And, and we've had struggles trying to get ministries going or fund them or, or fundraise them. And, and, and we've had struggles a, a lot of times. But God has always brought us through that. But a lot of times that worry, I would worry about something you know, I worry about getting this or getting this, and, 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 and I couldn't enjoy today, if that makes sense. I, I would be so anxious about what I was going to get the next day. And the Bible says uh, that tomorrow will take care of itself and the evil thereof. So be very careful about being worried about those things because then you're not putting your full trust in God. And as we put our full trust in God, He's provided for us, and He's brought us out of those troubles uh, time and time again. And, and so let's go over to, to verse uh, thirty. One. Let's, let's do 30. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, which means grass grows and it dies until the next season, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? It's a faith issue. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or whether all shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth uh, that you have need of all these things. Notice how God will give you your, your needs. Everything else that we have is a blessing. Uh, and America is known for excess. Uh, even people in other countries, not just America, uh, there's men and women who, who live in excess. And, and all those things can become such a burden on us. And then we try to keep those things going and, and they, they, they can get us in a, in, a, in a distraction from God to where we can't even focus on the Lord. And, and He doesn't want that. He never wants you to take things and, and it take your, your focus off Him or it bring you to a place of, of no faith. The Gentiles uh, at that time, which were non-Jews, they would, they would go and they would try to accumulate and accumulate. And God even told them, uh, you know, when they were in, in the wilderness, uh, right after they were uh, delivered from Egypt, he, he said, look, manna's going to come from heaven. I'm going to feed you. Quail's going to come from there. But I don't want you to collect it. And, and when they did, it, it ruined, it spoiled. He wants you to every day go uh, and, and receive his grace, mercy, and his provision. But we sometimes spend unwisely. And I have done that before. And so you have to be careful how you spend. You can't blame that on God. Or God led me over here to do this. And God. Uh, Sometimes it, it's not God. Sometimes it's our own desires. And, and sometimes it's Satan himself or the demonic that would lead you into a place that would draw you away from God. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. This is our key point scripture. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, not your righteousness, not the church's righteousness, not, not any church leader, not, not any preacher or teacher, amen, but the righteousness of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. And you notice he doesn't give a long list of, uh, he doesn't say Maserati, plane, uh, million dollar ministry, which he could give you those things, then that'd be fine. But what I'm saying is, uh, what, what he is saying, look to the basics, the things that you have need of, food and clothes. He doesn't even really put shelter on here. Uh, amen. Uh, but he will give you water, food and clothes and and you know there's not many places that you can't get that in this country but there are there are people in other places who are unable to to have these things but they get it to the point to where they still can can live but god those that have have sought him out those that have have become his child he will give you those things that you need and the only person that can take those things from you is maybe somebody else. You know, there's people who get captured and there's people who are captive. There's, there's uh, uh, evil and corrupt governments who, who won't give to their people and, and they take that and, and their countries are very poor and I understand that as well. But, you know, there, there's always gray areas to each rule. But the reality is 
Um, God will take care of you. You just have to pray and ask Him, and He will provide food, water, and, and those, those basic needs that we have, and He'll cover you with clothing. And, and that's pretty accessible to most people, no matter where you're at in the world. And it says, Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take care of the... Th- shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient of the day is the evil thereof. Meaning that all the stuff's going to happen tomorrow. God's already put that in a plan. He's already got a plan for the next day, the next day, the next day until the, the uh, end of ages for this world, this life, until we go into an eternal life. And so uh, God, let Him worry about those things. When we put our full trust and faith in God, we're allowing him to, to take care of those things. Now, don't be like the Thessalonians and other people who said, you know what, I'm going to go sit on a rock and I'm not going to work. We're just going to sit here and look up and wait until God comes back. That's not what Paul or any of the biblical teachers are saying. Jesus is not saying um, don't be responsible or don't work or don't take care of your, your responsibilities. What he's saying is that you can't worry about everything and be careful how you put yourself in, or how you put yourself in a position uh, uh, of stress of worry. Uh, be careful how you spend. Be careful. Be wise. Uh, if you've overspent, then, then try to do some things to, to alleviate that, that stress. But if you sit and worry all the time about things about tomorrow which you have no control over, I mean, you'll never be happy today. You'll never enjoy today. And God wants us to have this present time of joy right now. So if, if you're anxious and you're stressed out and you're worried, uh, I just pray that God would bless you in your finances. I pray God would bless you with the needs that you have, not your wants and desires, but the very basic needs. And I believe that God's going to provide a spiritual need for you. You need to seek ye therefore the kingdom of God first and His righteousness, and all shall be added unto thee. And if you will allow God to do that, and you focus on God, then you won't have to worry about the morrow. Thank you for tuning in again to the Way to Recovery Show. Remember, for your generous financial gift of $100 or more, we'll send you and your family this complete three-part DVD series. First is our exciting eight-week small group edition designed specifically for both church and home group settings. Next is our family and friends edition designed for anyone who has had a loved one struggling from addictions or addictive behaviors. Also included is the individual study series developed to encourage anyone seeking a life of recovery through the power of God's Word. Again, don't miss this opportunity to receive these dynamic DVD sets. Also, for an individual copy of any of these three series, call the 1-800 number on your screen with your financial gift to receive your copies today. Until next time, this is Pastor Greg Trout. God bless.